Hey everybody, it's Tyler here at the World Championship, checking team number 971 Spartan Robotics, who has built another phenomenal machine this year. Absolutely love everything that's gone into this. Take a look at what 971 has to offer. Of course, the blue banner this year, but we're talking about this incredible arm, their end effector, but they've been doing some really cool stuff with some machine learning, April take detection, some really awesome other stuff with Vision, and a custom PCB as well. We'll be covering all this and more coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Annie Mark has parts and products designed specifically for First Robox competition and First Tech Challenge teams. Many Annie Mark staff are first alumni, mentors, and event volunteers. Visit AnnieMark.com for all your educational robotics needs. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first-based camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsored camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Marissa, we got to start out on this robot with us. Incredible arm. You know, when I think Spartan Robotics, uh, it's always just some super cool stuff that your team does every single year. So start me out with this, kind of talking about uh, how the process has gone to get your geometry on this and uh, the overall structure of it. Yeah, so we have a double jointed arm with a roll joint. Um, we came to this geometry because one of our goals going into the season was to be able to intake on one side and place on the other um, for cycles. Um, so we looked in CAD and we figured out that a double jointed arm fit that spec really well. And then we ended up adding in the roll joints so that we could pick up cones and then flip over around and place it without having to turn around our drive base. Um, because we have a tank, it's a lot harder to turn around uh, smoothly. So that's why we had that spec. And it ended up nicely being able to pick up and place on both sides in the end as well. When did you make some of those modifications? Was that like before the comp season started or did you make any modifications throughout the competition season? Um, the arm has stayed the same the entire competition season. We did a lot of math um, and simulations in order to make sure that our arm was really stiff, yeah. which is a, one of our design goals. So we actually measured the stiffness of chain and the stiffness of this cable. Um, and we took that information as well as like the radius of the sprocket and capstan sizes. And we put that in a simulation from our 2018 arm um, and used that to make sure that um, our arm would be really stiff when we extended and it would just be able to stick in that place. Can we see the arm come out and just kind of uh, uh, talk to me a little about, you know, when you were looking at like anything from your center of gravity to just yeah. uh, how your degrees of freedom work and that sort of thing, like just kind of narrate a little bit what's going on with your arm for that. Yeah, of course. So you can actually see that our roll joint down here is placed at the bottom of this tube. So this entire tube actually rotates. And that is because we wanted to keep our CG low when we were moving around. So this is kind of where our robot's at when we're driving around. And we also have our arm paths optimized for CG. So if you want to show them a couple arm positions, maybe. I guess just maybe a sure. Yeah. yeah. Maybe scoring position. So yeah, you can see how the base of our uh, distal joint stays low and in the robot. And so that's mainly for CG purposes. Uh, we really don't want to be tippy and it helps us go faster and score faster. Yeah, and obviously you're using some carbon fiber here for things as well. I guess my concern when I was looking at it, it's like, you know, you got a lot of weight like right here with, mm -hmm. with this uh, uh, gear and sprocket area as well too, but it just looks so stable when I watch it on the field as well yeah. too. And I really like that whole process and what's gone through that. Um, yeah. One other thing I'll ask you uh, uh, on your arm in particular is that when you're looking at uh, like scoring set points and that sort of thing, you know, we've seen some teams where they, they maybe only come out a little bit. Uh, how does 971 kind of approach with in regards to like when you were analyzing the game saying, okay, we need our arm to come out this far, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so we wanted to make sure that we could score and like have a bit of wiggle room. So we're not a team that goes all the way up to like those wooden or like the metal hard stuff. Yeah, right stuff. up to the edge of the grid yeah, sort of thing. So yeah, so we have, we give it a little space so that we can actually use our vision to align and angle our robot. So there's actually a button that our manipulator presses and it just auto aligns and like can angle. So we make sure we have some wiggle room um, for our extension. So you'll see when we're extended to the highest cone node, we actually are still bent, so we're not fully extended. And I know we'll be talking about uh, code a little bit later on as well mm -hmm. too, so we'll get into that. But first, uh, we gotta go to Paulina to talk more about uh, the end effector, the intake that you're doing here. Um, love to just hear, obviously, what it is, how you came to it, and then I'd like to hear a little bit about Matt strategy-wise. Are you typically, do you find yourself picking up more from the floor? Are you going to the load stations? What's working out best for Spartan Robotics? 
Yeah, so we actually like to pick up cones and we go to the double substation. We, we have, um, our intake is pretty good at touching and then taking it immediately. So these two rollers right here, they spin and it just sucks up the cone. We actually able to pick up both tip cones and upright cones. So tip cones would go in by the flange. Of course, it'd be on the bottom. But actually, when we intake things, we go on like the other side. So, sorry, this is oops, maybe the other way. But as you can see, this would be like roughly where the intake position for the vertical cone is. And we actually have a wrist over here that allows, oops, it's kind of hard to see. But oh, the, the wrist allows us to pick up the cones from like different orientations from the floor and from the human player station. Lastly, I did, something I just want to ask for 971 is uh, looking at the width of your intake for things. You know, we've seen teams uh, who have gone uh, smaller intakes because they're worried about like where you're placing that sort of thing. I really like wide intake still for this game. I think it's a great approach to go. Why was it important to go with uh, this uh, sort of width for 971? Yeah, so we actually have the capability to sense where the cone is because of these two sensors right here. So we always know where the cone is within our intake. And we like having a wide intake so that basically we don't have to be as accurate when we pick up. We can just go for the cone and then it's like we have a larger area to pick up. Milan, you know, when I look at uh, from programming side and, and making your work, you know, mechanically wise, I think it's what kind of gets you your base level, but it's really what goes into it from a software side that really puts you in that tier one level of teams, right? And, and how you approach again that way. So talk to me, I know we talked ahead of time, you got a whole bunch going from Apple Tech, machine learning to awesome stuff in your vision. Yeah, yeah. Talk to me where what's gone into this robot. Yeah, so uh, first off, as Paulina mentioned, we're able to auto align with the target to score. And a big part of that is our April tag detection. So we have four cameras on our robot for April tags, um, two on each side that are facing opposite um, 90 degrees. So we have four cameras all around, which means we have a full 360 degree field of view. So no matter where we are, we're seeing the April tags. Um, and connected to each camera is a processor called a Rock Pi, which is kind of like a Raspberry Pi, but it has more compute power and works better with our real time software. And each one is then computing where the April tags are and sending all these estimates to another rock pie at the bottom over here. And what this one's job is basically is to fuse vision data, which is coming at 30 hertz, so a little less frequent, but super accurate, um, along with IMU data, which is coming at 1,000 times a second, and drivetrain encoder data to basically get a really accurate estimate of where the robot is on the field. And it uses something called an extended common filter to deweight all these noisy estimates, um, as well as combining with our physics models to predict where the robot should go. And then we use this to both uh, to follow like precise paths in autonomous, um, which leads us to our three game piece and balance auto. And that's why we're able to execute that as well as auto aligning when we're going to place. Um, one perk that we noticed is that the April tags are never placed perfectly on the field. And when we're trying to follow paths on auto, like we need them to be super accurate. So we came up with a solution for this, which is field calibration. We have a little tool here we call the box of pies, and it's basically a bunch of rock pies uh, as well as some cameras on it. And what we do is in the calibration period, we take this thing out of the, on the field, uh, get a lot of video of all the April tags, and we basically we get a bunch of observations of all of them, and we stitch these observations of different April tags together, put it into a nonlinear optimizer called Series, and we basically solve for where these April tags are actually located on the field. And you're doing that every single match that you come uh, out? No, so we do this uh, once for in the calibration period, every comp every field. Gotcha. And then this is going to solve for the position and orientation of every single April tag that uh, we use for vision. And then it's actually, it, we got it really accurate. So it's getting like to under, under a centimeter accuracy and wow. like a degree. So like, for example, a few days ago on Wednesday, uh, I took it out onto the field, calibrated it, and I was like, Oh shoot, why is one of the targets two centimeters off when we're solving for it? We go and measure it and it's actually two centimeters off. So it's like, it's, it's really, That's really awesome. Like and one of the things too, uh, you know, looking at uh, hopefully for the future here at Champs is that, you know, if you uh, end up getting the Einstein and that sort of thing, think of how valuable that's going to be, exactly. right? For having, you have so many teams where they, they, we always hear like they struggle when they get to a new field, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. This is a great path to go that way. I, I love it, man. Like when you, I, I got to ask you, is this something in the, like for future years, we might see like a white paper or anything like that on so teams can emulate it? I can definitely put something out. I think people will love yeah. it. Like this yeah. is this is absolutely incredible yeah, for, uh, sure. for that as well. Um, anything else from programming side you want yeah. to cover on your robot? Just uh, in general, our code is all open source on our GitHub, and we actually have an infrastructural layer of code for interprocess communication and like communication across different uh, computers. And this is actually shared by a lot of our mentors, and uh, I also work there at Blue River Technology. So they both share and 
contribute to our infrastructure layer of code. That's awesome. And they're a John Deere company too, so it's, it's a widespread use of our code and it's really good that our code is being used in like other places too. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, what, what an incredible thing that you're getting out of the industry for the, for those sort of things too. So yeah. congratulations on everything that's gone into that. Uh, programming wise, uh, absolutely awesome. Uh, I, I don't know how much you covered now, but I, get, I do have to ask yeah. about that camera down there as well. Yeah, so we have another a fifth camera right here. And what this guy is doing is it's also hooked up to a rock pie. And there is, if you see this white thing right there, that is a mini uh, TPU, which is called a tensor processing unit. And it's optimized for machine learning computation. And what this is doing is it's detecting cones in the end effector and specifically like the holes in the cones. So the part of them that you want to stick on, on like those sticks on the field. And it's figuring out what the position of these cones are on the end effector. Now, we ultimately got this working like a week before champs. So right. we're not actually using the result. But it's a really good experiment to show that we can do machine learning on our robot. Uh, we ended up just using a sensor here, but for next year and years to come, we're going to want to keep expanding on our machine learning. Uh, and yeah, so it's really good that we got that first step. Yeah, we can't wait to see the results. And if it is uh, on your robot next year too, to, to get more into that would be great. Hey, let's wrap up on your robot, talking about you're doing some custom PCBs, uh, both uh, on your robot and I think on your DS2, right? Yeah. Uh, so I'd love to hear just more about what you're doing and uh, how it's been working out for your team. Yeah, so on our robot, we have a lot of custom PCBs and most of them all serve a pretty specific purpose. So this one right here is um, actually, okay. so this one is, we call it the Pi Power Board. It does a lot on our robot and it takes in unregulated power from the PD board. And what it allows us to do is give us, give the Pi, like the Pi Power Board, the Pies, a consistent five volts and three amps, which is really valuable because we've ex like, it's really easy to experience a brownout on our vision if the battery voltage dips too low thanks to the arm and drive frame moving or something similar, right? And it also allows us to connect to our custom IMU or have a CAN interface. It's really featureful and it makes our lives a lot easier. Um, this is one of our sensor adapter boards. We call it the time of flight board. What it does is it adapts the two LiDAR sensors that we have here and the board itself goes right here. What it does is it adapts the two sensors and then reads them over the I2C bus. What that gives us is um, a, it, it's what does the calculation of where the game piece is within the end effector since we can't send the I2C bus all the way down to the Rio. Um, and then on the drive station itself, if we walk over here, so the drive station is probably one of my favorite examples of our custom PCBs. We use a lot of buttons and we there isn't really a good off the shelf solution to plug them into a computer. So what we made was we made a, uh, we call it the button board. Um, and it just takes in two pins for each button. And like, we're not enabled, right? So if I press a button, right? You can see how the lights turn on, like wherever the button's being pressed. And then that translates into a button output on the computer. We also have our custom pistol grip, which it takes in two encoders and allows us to read like, hey, the trigger's at this position. I'll send that down over CAN into the computer and I can figure out where the robot's supposed to be going. Well, 971 Spartan Robotics, a complete package, a phenomenal machine, well done. Uh, every single year we come by and see it, but I really just love to hear some of the specifics and things that I really think are gonna benefit the first community in the future as well, and obviously beyond the first community uh, as well. So congratulations on a great year and good luck here at World Championships. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first-paced camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsor camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.